So in testing fuel control or fuel delivery, an understanding of the fuel system monitor, along with long-term fuel trim, is going to be your aid in making a diagnosis. This is where we find a great many people not looking in enough detail before making a decision. Fuel trim refers to adjustments made dynamically to the base fuel delivery tables to get the proper air fuel ratio. Its job, fuel trim's job, is to take the information from the oxygen sensors and control the fuel delivery to bring the system back to a 14.7 to 1, our assumed air fuel ratio for this course. Short term and long term. We're going to show you how they work. We're going to show you actual scan data patterns. So we need to define them and show you how to interpret. We do a lot of interpretation of this with grafting. So learn to use the grafting on your scan tool. Short-term fuel refers to adjustments made in response to temporary conditions. What we do is we find short-term shifts rich, lean, rich, lean by very small percentages and ideally around 0%. Long-term is used to compensate for issues over a longer period of time and they're stored in memory. Once we get to about 165 degrees and into normal stage 2 fuels control, we're out of warm-up, we then start storing long-term fuel trim to be used in future operation. When the vehicles operate in the future, in most cases, there's a few computers that go back and learn it all over again, but most of them remember it and start back over where we left off. So long-term goes into memory. Short-term makes immediate corrections, it reacts quickly. Long-term react slower. Fuel trims are expressed in percentages. Positive values are lean. We're going to add fuel. Positive values indicate a lean condition. We need to add fuel. Negative values indicate a rich condition. We need to subtract fuel. It's calculated by using a wide range of data values. The front O2 sensors are the predominant input. Modified slightly by intake air, map, engine load, if we have cold temperatures, it's not going to try to fix the front sensors and say they're rich. It expects them to be rich. The knock sensor, we get some enrichment sometimes to reduce knock if it gets to be excessive. Throttle positions, particularly changes in throttle position. Battery voltage, battery voltage is low, we're going to increase the injector pulse width. Most of us begin with scan tool, so we're going to be using the point we should already know about what long-term fuel trim is. If not, go get it now. Long-term refers to information about the PCM thinks is needed to be done to correct for a fueling problem. Total fuel trim is used to set trouble codes. That's a combination of long-term and short-term. Now, oxygen sensors are not an island. Good fuel control depends on good oxygen sensors because that's our key to driving long-term and short-term fuel trim. Good oxygen activity depends on good fuel control. We've got to be least close to our ideal fuel ratio so that the oxygen sensors can give us the right correction so we can fix it. The two are almost married together. It's almost impossible to talk about long-term fuel trims in oxygen sensors at the same time. So let's talk about fuel trim first. It's a little bit of a chicken and the egg. The oxygen sensor drives the short-term fuel trim, which makes quick changes, which then in turn drives long-term fuel trim. Or is it the oxygen sensor causes changing in fuel trim, which causes changes in long-term? You can say it either way you want to. It's a chicken or the egg. Long-term is going to respond to changes reported by the oxygen sensor. It's going to look at short-term when it's wrong, too far, too long, long-term is going to make an adjustment and remember that adjustment. Here we are grafting B1 and S1, long-term fuel trim. They're within specifications. They're running along at zero. Now remember we have two sides to some engines. We're going to be looking at a V8 here and this is actual scan data points taken. Why are these right? They're right because short-term fuel trim are also normal. There's a small red pattern oscillating back and forth across zero. If we magnify it, we can see it. That little red pattern shifting, rich lean, rich lean, 
by one or two percentage points around the zero point. That's normal short-term fuel trim. Long-term fuel trim doesn't have to make any adjustments because long, short-term is a little bit high, comes back, goes a little bit low, a little bit high, a little bit low, switching back and forth, and long-term says, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm not going to make any adjustment. Now, that means normal oxygen sensor driving is that a normal oxygen sensor is driving short-term, which in turn is driving long-term. Do you see now why we say it's a chicken and the egg? If the oxygen sensor signal was reporting very lean conditions or very rich conditions, we'd have a different outcome. Let's say we have a condition, and we just made this condition on a vehicle. Here's what happened. We made the oxygen system go rich. Went rich and then short-term, long-term made corrections and brought the system back into normal switching. The right side of the pattern has got the same air-fuel ratio as the left side of the pattern. In the middle, air-fuel ratio went wrong. It went rich. It dropped below 14.7. And we did that by changing fuel pressure on the system. We made an abnormal fuel pressure. We disconnected the uh, vacuum port on a fuel pressure regulator so that fuel pressure went up, just to show you what's going to happen. So what happened? We got normal oxygen switching. We make it go rich. Short term and long term are going to drive it lean to bring it back into normal switching, which is where we wind up on the right side of the screen. This is a preview of everything we're going to see through the next few sequences. You're going to go from normal fuel control to a rich back to normal fuel control by the, by the O2 sensor. But the numbers for short term and long term are going to be changing. Here's what happened. We started off at 14.7. We made our changes. Short trim went down, brought the system back to 14.7. So the O2 reported a rich condition in our study here, and short term made a correction. But remember, this will make a correction for either rich or lean. We're correcting for rich because it went down. Both cases, at the beginning, turn on the right, we have a 14.7. In between, the number went lower but we brought it back to normal. Let's see what else is going on. When short-term moves, moves too far for too long, long-term fuel trim will make a correction to bring this system back to normal. Remember, this has to be over about 160, 165, and in stage 2 fuel trim before long-term starts updating. Or an old thermostat that is not bringing the engine up to temperature you may not get long-term corrections. Doesn't happen often. Usually it only happens in the wintertime. Only happens with a belt-driven fan because the fan thermostat. But be aware of it. Here's what happened. Short-term responds immediately. Then after it's been long enough, long-term starts a correction, which returns the oxygen back to normal, like we said was going to happen. Long-term fuel description is a matrix of cells arranged by engine RPM and load. We have different load cells and as a various number of vehicles have various numbers of them. Each cell of long term is a register in the computer that stores that value for that operating condition. If you tow a trailer, it takes high, RP, high loads at 60 miles an hour you'll almost have a separate set of load cells for that high load condition. It'll also probably match your vehicle going up a large hill. If you don't have the trailer on, the load will be less and you'll have a different set. Or if you're not going up the hill. Hills cause different cells. Everything that changes load, changes RPM, will give you a different set of cells. As the engine load changes, the RPM will switch from cell to cell to determine what's the best long-term fuel factor to use for that particular operating conditions. All of this, remember, is being driven by the oxygen sensor. Here's a example of the e-scan. It builds a table for us of fuel delivery in cells by load. Look, we start off at 2, go to 4, back to 2, up to 2, 3, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. It's giving us basic fuel trims for all the different cells as it goes through it. Enough loads, enough operating conditions, 
you could fill up quite a bit of this chart. So long-term in any given cells is when the EPCM monitors short-term fuel trims and makes adjustments. It's going to do it for a lot of different places. We're going to look at one, okay? The short-term has moved too far from zero. The PCM will change long-term. Once long-term values change, it should force short-term back to zero. Let me say that again. Once long-term has changed, it should force short-term back to zero. If it can't force it back to zero, we're out of fuel control and total fuel control of long-term, short-term, both being higher than normal and short-term not getting back to zero sets our trouble code. We won't set trouble code till short-term has gone as far as long-term can go, and we have to have short and long-term together in order to get fuel control. Let's see what it looks like. If the mixture is still not correct, it's determined by the O2 sensor, the short term will continue to have large deviations from the ideal zero. In this case, long term will continue to change until it becomes balanced. Both short term and long term have limits that vary by the calibration, but it's somewhere around 25-30% most cases. If the mixture is off enough so that long term reaches the limit of control and cannot correct the condition, short term would also have to go to its limits in the same direction and they would be out of fuel control and the O2s would start would lose their ability to total fuel control. Here's what happened. Back to a scan tool. We started off on the top. We're looking at short term. It corrects for a lean condition. What we did here is we put our vacuum hose back on the fuel pump or the fuel pressure sensor, caused the fuel pressure to go down. When it went down, the moment went down, went down to 21.4 to 1. Very lean. So short term acts quickly. Long term doesn't do anything. But we can't correct it with short term. It stays too lean, too long. So what happens next? Long term comes up. When long term comes up, short term moves back towards zero. Remember, one is fixing the other. We're going to remember long term. Later on, we check to see. It didn't move back to zero. Go up again on long term. Bring short term down. Did it get back to zero? Short term works around 4.6. Long term remains at 22.5 in this particular case. Move the problem into memory. 22.5. We're still holding 4.6% short term. Here we are. O2 was lean. Short term was at 2.3%. Long term was at 1.9. This is our oxygen sensor. We're going to show you how it happened at the oxygen sensor and what went on. Short term starts to react. It goes up to 21.4. O2 says, hey, I'm seeing more fuel. Long term hasn't learned anything yet. This is progressing right through the correction we went through just now. We've, we're starting to see fuel control, but not enough. Well, long term has bounced up to 14.9. Short term has come down. We've got some basis of fuel trim trying to start. Finally, when we get all done, we have stored the changes in long term for memory. We've got short term. We're back into fuel control. So question we're going to have for you, if you're looking for a lean mixture, which is a frequent trick question, do you look at the O2 sensor to see a lean mixture? We have lean fuel conditions here that's been corrected. Remember, the only way we're going to see a lean fuel mixture here is if long-term fuel trim has reached its limit in control and the short term has reached its limit of control and we can't get back to fuel control like this then you'll see your lean mixture you'll probably have a trouble code at that point if the lean mixture is still not corrected for both short-term and fuel trim at their extreme values a fuel trim diagnostic trouble code will be set and we'll say hey we can't control it. Now we'll see it showing up in our O2 sensor. The PCM uses a combination of long-term and short-term to set codes. And one of the following will set. 171 for bank 1 is too lean. 174 for bank 1 is too lean. 172 is bank 2 too rich. And 175 is bank 2 too rich. So you've got four rich and leans. Can these be caused by oxygen sensors that are not doing the right job? Yes, they can, but you're kind of a, at a catch-22. Maybe, maybe not. But remember, these can also be set not just by oxygen sensors, by those sensors that calculate 
air fuel ratio and get our delivery there. Are those calculations correct? Now, when we start talking about trouble codes and correcting for mixtures, let's take a look and see what we really need to be looking at in scan data before we assume we know what's causing this. Because we don't. You have a lot of hidden information about fuel delivery. You really don't know the condition of any of the sensors controlling fuel calculations. And you don't know how the O2 is looking.